it was one of the deadliest train wrecks in American history where two trains head on in a devastating impact so many people dying from such a horrific accident a century later it still stuns people but today we're going to reflect to see what happened this is the story of the great train wreck of 1918 On July 9th, 1918, at 7.07 a.m., the Nashville, Chattanooga, and St. Louis train number 4 departs Union Station in Nashville, bound for Memphis. The train is pulled by G8A class locomotive number 282, a 4.60 built by Baldwin. It was pulling two mail and baggage cars and six wooden coaches. Meanwhile, in the opposite direction, train number one, pulled by GAA 281, was heading into Nashville from Memphis, containing one baggage car, six wooden coaches, and two Pullman steel cars. Train number one had departed McKenzie four hours earlier and passed Bellevue at 7.09 a.m., running 35 minutes late. Both trains required the use of a single track section approximately 10 miles long in the western portion of Nashville. According to practices, the inbound train retained the right of way. Thus, the railroad dispatch informed the crew of the opposing train number 4 of the locomotive number of number 1, with orders to stop in the double track section. If the crew did not visually identify the passing number one before they reached the interlocking tower, known as Shops Junction, where the signal track began. The term Shops refers to the railroad's massive repair and refueling shops, including its largest roundhouse. This was not a pasture stop, but rather a junction where railroad's main line track to Memphis narrowed down to just one track. While train number four traversed into the double track section, the conductor delegated the responsibility of identifying the number one to the remainder of the crew. While he was collecting tickets, he mistook the sound of the passing switch engine with empty pasture cars as the actual number one train. The crew either made the same error or were negligent in properly identifying the train. As number four approached the interlocking tower at Shops Junction, Tower operator J.S. Johnson showed a clear signal for the tower's train order signals, indicating all was clear. As he stopped to record the train in his logs, he realized that number one had not yet passed, as the entry was not shown in his journal. Then he realized this mistake. He reported to the dispatcher, who telegraphed back, saying, He meets number one there. Can you stop him? Johnson sounded the emergency whistle from the tower, but there was no one at the rear of number four to hear it. So the train passed on through the signal on the assumption that number one had already passed and all was clear, when in reality, number one hadn't even arrived yet. Also, the engineer and conductor failed to visually inspect the train's register at Shops Junction in order to confirm whether number one had even passed yet. That was required by operating instructions issued by railroad management prior to the wreck, which clearly wasn't followed. Shortly after 7.20 a.m. though, the worst nightmares come true. Two trains collide at Dutchman's Grade near White Bridge Road. It is estimated that the westbound train was traveling at around 50 miles an hour, while the Nashville bound train was running at 60 miles an hour. Many of the wooden coaches were either crushed, hurled sideways, or telescoped into one another. The sound of the collision could be heard two miles away. 
This was also supposed to be the last trip before the retirement of the engineer of the Nashville bound train. Guess that wasn't happening. The Interstate Commerce Commission listed the official dead at 101, though some reports list the death toll as high as 121. At least 171 people were injured. Many of the victims were African American laborers from Arkansas and Memphis who were coming to work at the gunpowder plant in Old Hickory outside of Nashville for the First World War. As many as 50,000 people came to the track that day to help rescue survivors, search for their loved ones, or just simply witness the horrific scene. So there's the question. How on earth could such a disaster happen? And why? Well, in the official report, the Interstate Commerce Commission was very harsh on the railroad. A combination of operating practices, human error, and lackluster enforcement on operating rules led to this horrible worst passenger train wreck in U.S. history. Had the signal tower operator properly left his signal at danger and the conductor muttered his train progress rather than entrusting it to a subordinate, and had the crew inspected the train's register at Shops Junction as required, the accident may have been prevented. But it wasn't. And now we have to live with it. The wreck, however, spelled the end for old wooden coaches, and nowadays, as seen today, all pasture coaches and freight cars are now made of hard steel. However, even 100 years later, this wreck still has significance. In the 1970s, songwriters Bobby Braddock and Rafe Van Hoy told the story of the wreck in the song The Great Nashville Railroad Disaster, a true story. The song was recorded by country music singer David Allen Coe on his 1980 album, I've Got Something to Say. Of course, I can't show you examples because copyright. The locomotives involved in the wreck were presumed scrapped by a lot of people, but ironically, they weren't. 281 and 282's boilers were pulled from the wreckage and were later rebuilt in 1919 along with the rest of the locomotives in the class and continued in service throughout the two world wars until their official retirement in 1947 and 1948. Sadly though, neither locomotive were preserved. 281 was scrapped in June 1948 and 282 was scrapped in April 1949. None of their sisters ever survived either from 280 to 286. One of the worst train wrecks in American history, it'll never be forgotten. However, some say even 100 years later, we haven't learned the lessons yet. In the morning of July 12, 2016, the Andre Carato train collision happened in the late afternoon in a single track section of the Barry Barletio Railway, where two trains collided head on with each other. That wreck killed 23 people, including both drivers, one conductor, 19 passengers, and one civilian who was close by to where the crash happened, injuring 54 as well. The crash is still under investigation, but a lot of people say it's very similar to what happened to the 1918 crash because after all, one train was mistaked for another in this crash as well. Which begs the question, have we seen the last great train wreck of 1918? I hope not. <laughs>